Ah, Mike's Daily Podcast. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 2063. Yeah. Hi, I'm Mike Matthews. Welcome to the show that is called Mike's Daily Podcast. Located somewhere in Podcastro Valley, Mont. This is Mike Matthews. Yeah, I've been getting up early for a couple days. When I wish it was. A little bit later on, like most of you, but I'm up at four. <sighs> Boo-hoo. They say if you want people to listen to your podcast, you should put the best part. Mike's Daily Podcast. Right here. So there you go. I put the best part right there, and hopefully I have Mike's now more than one listener. Daily and I don't podcast. listen to the podcast, so yeah. there is one other person mom no she's never listened to the show actually she doesn't know how she is defiant against technology yes she hates technology not as much as you you see she really just mom so it's so easy you just go online you're already online right yeah i think i am well you're looking through your kindle you're looking at stuff online so that's being online and then you could just go and check out my podcast. No, that's okay. <laughs> yes, that's the support I have. It's so funny because Garth Brooks, I know I've, I've talked about him a lot. I watched that documentary on Netflix. Uh, the guy, this is Garth Brooks through this whole thing. <laughs> he, gets, he gets so intense. Um, he's like, you know, people told me that, Garth, you're going to make it. And I'd go out there on the stage and there'd be 50,000 people. And he starts to whisper like this, 50,000 people. I didn't think there was going to be 50,000 people, but there they were. There were so many people. And here's today's podcast picture. There was more people than on the earth. In fact, there were people from Middle Earth and and Earth 2 and other dimensions. So he gets he gets very intense is all I'm saying. Fine. That's fine. The podcast picture today is going to be fantastic. I don't think I'll put my face on it today. You can want to see my lovely face. You can go to the last podcast Mike's Daily Podcast.com is where you can see all those you can tell me what you think about all the stuff we cover you can call me like Basil will call me from time to time well he's right there in the living room so he'll, he'll say Mike I'd like some of that stuff you have how about that wonderful string of spaghetti that noodle I want to eat it like Lady in the Tramp style. Because that's... I love... He... Is telling you... That you can call me at... 336-MM-DAILY. 3 plus 3 equals 6. MM as in Mike Matthews daily. As in... What uh, this podcast tries to be. There's not a person in this room who hasn't done that. Who hasn't called Mike's Daily Podcast? Cafe anyway. 336-MM-DAILY. Well, well, so he gets really intense, Garth does. Oh, but he talks about his mom. Gosh, his mom was such a cheerleader for him. But one thing she did that he really appreciated was when people asked her, hey, you must be really proud of your son. She'd go, oh, which one? And that was kind of funny because there was only one Garth Brooks in her family. But yes, she had several sons. I think all of them successful, but at any rate, we should, uh, we shouldn't, we should have telecommuted whole, this whole thing. We, the way we're doing now, working from home, we should have been doing this a long time ago. We had the technology. We were acting like my mom. We were being defiant. No, we don't like technology. Dang it. Why can't I find that song? Always and forever. Uh, that was from Napoleon Dynamite. But not the the movie. It was in the movie. 
But on the DVD, it wasn't actually released when the movie came out. Because they added that part I'm singing from after the movie, when it was on DVD. And I think a lot of people saw it on DVD. Or they saw it later as it hit the HBO and all the other things. My point is, we could have been doing this whole technology thing earlier. Some were. Some were doing the WebEx and the Google Meetings and all that. But then the nor- the normal, the average, the regular person, regular Joe said, Hey, I'm going to start... I'm going to do, what's this thing called, Zoom? And then that went crazy. And then we had to because we were in lockdown and shelter in place. And now it's going to be very difficult to let go of it. You've opened up the box and you, you know, people, there are companies that are like, okay, you can start going back to work now. Start going back to work. Honestly, with the whole just conducting a little inventory on on all this, I really could have done most of this from home. Some of the stuff, there's stuff you have to actually be there with the radio. You have to actually be in the studio to press the buttons to make sure the station's playing. And you can't really do it from home as well. I mean, you can, but the the company would have to invest in a lot of money. And then there's, uh, well, there's all kinds of inherent things that can go wrong with that. But the fact that so much of it can be done from home and so much of it was coming to work sitting in an office and just basically dealing with people throwing their work on you that they could have been doing that I just I think we could get so much more done through telecommuting through the working at home but that's the big thing oh the other thing Garth Brooks said one last time to visit Garth was he got really upset he was talking to his daughters he's got three daughters And one of his daughters said, both. Kind of like a drop the O, both sound. And Garth was, as we go outside a cafe anyway, where we bring you Mike's Daily Podcast somewhere in Podcastro Valley. Mont. The last place on earth. Anyway. Cafe anyway. Anyway. And he goes, wait, we don't say both. We say both. And then he goes, that's when I realized. Then he starts to whisper. That's when I realized. That it wasn't me raising my girls It was my nanny Raising the girls And that's when he went into retirement Uh Uh-huh You're welcome for that bit of story But it was all because of the word both Isn't that funny? I just found that interesting Okay 24 hour fitness is closing 130 gyms A bunch here in the Bay Area I've never liked these places. I don't like fitness or gym, well, 24 hour fitness. I knew one guy that went there. He he said, oh yeah, everywhere I travel, I go to a 24 hour fitness. And this guy just basically kissed his muscles all day. He was so into himself, so vain. And then, uh, 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 look, I'm I'm not in shape. I'm not super fit. I try my best. I try and walk every day. I can't. You know, stuff happens. I get busy. But it's like 24 hour fitness. Come on. And CrossFit idiots. They annoy me too. But here's what gets me really. So, this is my whole problem with it. Is you. And I'm not sure exactly if this is what 24 hour fitness does, but a lot of these fitness type places do this, these gyms, is you have to give them like a certain amount like they have to basically be able to pull the money out of your bank account and unless they set it up that way then it's a no-go and then if you cancel they're still pulling the money out of your bank and you got to jump through all these hoops we had to literally move from one state to another to end the contract that my then wife had with a gym it was that they were that locked in it was crazy so places like 24 hour fitness going out of business because of coronavirus and people can't go out they weren't they were deemed a non-essential service so people can't go in there and work out and you know just the whole nature of coronavirus you'd have to wipe everything down constantly 
And you know how well people wipe stuff down in gyms as it is. Oh, I just sweated all over this thing. Here, you can use it. Oh, and did you hear at Disneyland, people are complaining about Splash Mountain. Now, the way the story was told, I wanted to jump through the... I, I heard it on the radio. I wanted to jump through the speaker and strangle the reporter that said this. People are protesting Splash Mountain because they said the name Splash Mountain is racist because it comes from Song of the South. No. Splash Mountain, the name Splash Mountain, even though Splash Mountain does feature scenes and music from the movie that Disney did, Song of the South, which was a remake of a very old book that, let's just say, did a lot of cultural appropriation. It was a white man writing about the black man's world, the black people life in the times in the in the South. And yes, it did not, it was not, uh, let's just say very PC of the time. Walt Disney did it because he was a huge fan of the book. His, most of the things that he did, his kids loved first, like Mary Poppins. His kids were all into that and he's like, oh, maybe I can make this into a movie. And his whole thing was making, he loved involving people with cartoons like you see in Mary Poppins and some of his early work. No, but to back it all up, yes, the, 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 the thing is though, Splash Mountain, the characters that you see in it were actually taken from a ride at Disneyland called America Sings that was created by, I believe it was Mark Davis, the, some of the characters. And, and America Sings was a very like pro-America, we're all different. We're all together. Well, it's a, it's a, you know, long may this country last and all the good things about America, basically. And then they, that ride was basically a show. The show got canceled with these animatronic characters. They took the animatronic characters and put them in Splash Mountain. And some of them are singing zippity doo dah. Um, but there's some other songs that they actually wrote for the ride because it's you're going through this uh, cave and there's all these animals dancing around and at any rate the name Splash Mountain my point is is not from Song of the South it was actually at the time and I've heard this from several sources uh, Michael Eisner wanted to promote the new movie Splash the one with Tom Hanks and Daryl Hannah the Mermaid, and John Candy, and Eugene Levy. That, they wanted to promote that movie, Splash, and so he wanted the word Splash in the title. So that's how that came about. What that connection is with Song of the South, and just, the, they, that's how they did it at the time. But do you want to actually stop the ride, Splash Mountain? I mean, you could take zippity doo out of there, if that really offends you. But that's interesting. I know a lot about rides. I've been thinking a lot about this one ride at Epcot that I never got to ride. I think it was called Horizons. And so much of that, it talked a lot about telecommuting and teleconferencing in the ride. And this was back in the 80s, early 90s. And the fact that, that they got it so right. And they had these animatronic humans going, oh, I can talk to so-and-so on the other side of the world. But that ride would probably offend someone too. But if you get offended, that's the way the cookie crumbles. No. <laughs> With protests going on around the world, demonstrations going on around the US. I don't know if you heard in San Francisco on the Bay Bridge, it was shut down westbound on Sunday. I don't know if that got a bunch of national coverage. That ended peacefully, even though it was a complete mess and illegal. You can't stop your car in the middle of a road, especially a major, major highway like that. And you're endangering people's lives. CHP was called in. They came in right away from going both directions. They came in, but it didn't escalate. And that's why it probably didn't get all over the news is because it didn't turn into a horrible scene. And that's all. Be oh, an Airbnb, by the way, that is unbelievable. Airbnb right now. So they, I don't know how they are staying in business with the coronavirus. Like, how would you, if you can't even go outside because you're too afraid of touching something and getting germs from it and dying, 
How could you possibly stay at somebody else's house? Whereas at least at a hotel, you can like call the head of the company and say, you're doing this right, right? And they go, yeah. I mean, I guess you got to trust the company at some point unless you, you know, unless you don't. And then you probably don't even go to Starbucks or any national chain. But it's uh, Airbnb is somebody you don't know. I guess the hotel is you don't know either, but it just seems now I heard somebody explain it the exact opposite. They said Airbnb, someone you know, it's a you know personal person, personal person. It's a person, not a company that's taking care of the residents, and they're probably doing a lot better job keeping it clean than a hotel would or a big chain would. So. And that's where Airbnb is trying to live right now, is trying to get those people that think that way to come in. They also sent me an email about uh, fighting discrimination at Airbnb two weeks ago. It says, we reached out to express our solidarity with Black Lives Matter and to share some anti-racism resources for the Airbnb community. Now more than ever, we're dedicated to fighting for equality and justice. They're introducing Project Lighthouse. Uh, is a groundbreaking initiative we're launching in the United States to uncover, measure, and overcome discrimination when booking or hosting on Airbnb. They said they're built to uncover discrimination and they're designed with privacy in mind. Okay, well, hopefully, didn't they have that horrible incident? Was it Norinda earlier this year where there was a party and somebody got shot and yeah airbnb I, I the last airbnb experience i had was so awful that's why i'm a little dis i disgusted with them i don't want to use them well i would use them if it wasn't the exact situation is the last one i, I never stay at an airbnb where the people are there on the premises that's all i'm saying it's pretty bad it, it, it just all kinds of things can go wrong. For one thing, the people that own the house or wherever, or the, the unit, and they're there on the premises, they make noise, they wake you up. They're curious about you. They want to talk to you. You don't want to talk to them unless you're the type that just needs someone to talk to. Then I would say, get a cat. But that's the, neither here nor there or anywhere. Do we have cats outside a cafe anyway? Located in Podcastro Valley, Mont. Let's see. Hi, Mark. It's Benita the Rodeo Queen. How are y'all doing? I brought my horse Nelly today. Hey. <laughs> no cats, just horses. Look who else is here. Well, Mark, this is the disgruntled Philip player. Tell you what. What? Airbnb. That sounds like you'd be living inside of a big cloud. Like a hotel cloud. You can't do that. That's impossible. Tell you what. What? Cloud hotels are impossible. Airbnb. Yes. It's an interesting name. That's probably why it's gotten successful. Look who else is here. Oh, my God. I make the delicious root beer hamster right now. Oh, boy. I'll cut you. Excellent. Okay. Thank you here. The root beer. No coronavirus in it. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. That's good. All right, next show, it'll be the wonderful Madam Rutabaga Valentino and Bison Bentley. Thanks for listening. Let me know what you think. 3 plus 3 equals 6 mm as a Mike Matthews Daily as in what this podcast has been for a couple of days. Yay. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now. Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.